Welcome to our webinar. My name is Anatoly Pastelnik. I'm the head of the healthcare practice at First Line Software. COVID-19 is a global disaster that has deeply affected the lives of people around the world. The most profound implications the pandemic is having in our healthcare systems, placing organizations under unprecedented financial and clinical stress and forcing them to transform their traditional processes within very short time frames. In this presentation, we will take a look at a few examples of such transformations and review technology solutions to, that we've been working with, uh, uh, with healthcare organizations and private companies. Before we begin, let's start with a few words about the company. First Line was uh, formed about a little over 10 years ago. It's a global software solutions provider headquartered in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The company uh, is a little over 10 years old, as I said, and is led by an experienced team of uh, entrepreneurs who've been around for together, in fact, for over 25 years. The company has nearly 700 engineers working in mostly four development centers two in Czech Republic and two in Russia. In addition to our delivery centers, we have offices around the world, some of them business and sales, some have engineering allocations as well. We're one of the earliest adopters of agile software methodology. Our leadership can be credited as pioneers in the 90s of using agile methodology with distributed teams working together in different parts of the world. This map gives you a quick overview of our location of most of our projects and our offices. One important uh, note is that one of our largest projects in healthcare is located in Australia. Moving on to the healthcare practice. Uh, the healthcare practice was formed in 2016 to combine our multi yearly expertise in healthcare and uh, coincided with the acquisition of another company that has very long experience in building healthcare solutions. Most of our projects are in the United States, but there are quite a few around the world as well. Our clients are healthcare organizations, commercial vendors, life sciences companies, researchers, and startups. Unlike majority of other engineering projects, our teams in healthcare consists of not just engineers, but also of business and clinical analysts, medical informaticians, and sometimes includes clinicians. We pay very close attention to education, and uh, our business analysts and medical informaticians are, have extensive training in medical informatics and uh, healthcare workflows. We practice what we call a cross-pollination of our expertise across different domains, meaning that we're sharing what we know in healthcare with other teams across the organization. And uh, on the same level, we're sharing knowledge from other projects in healthcare. So let's talk about effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on healthcare organizations. What does it mean? Of course, this list by no means is comprehensive. This is our personal experience, how we observe effects of the pandemic on the organizations, but I'm sure there are other implications at the same time, what you see on the screen is what majority of institutions are dealing with. Well, first of all, the facilities are locked down for visits by patients and visitors. The organizations are struggling with the resources, allocation of resources and allocation of stuff. The more importantly, not more importantly, but significantly important is the fact that distribution of resources may be uneven. The availability of ventilators or skilled staff in one location may exceed what is needed at this location. At the same time, at a different location, the situation be completely different. Nationwide and worldwide testing is extremely crucial, but availability of tests, a reliable test is limited and is not always available for general population. Patients are losing access to health services and providers lose access to patients. And of course, it's extremely important to identify individuals who are either uh, sick or at risk of being sick or at risk of significant complications from the virus. 
So let's talk a little bit about a few applications or a few systems that we've been working with with organizations. One of them is called visitor tracking application. Another is past work application. So the first one is obviously targets visitors to health facilities. The second one targets employees. The third application that I'm going to be talking about used for enterprise resource management across organizations, across hospitals. We're involved in development of innovative at home self-collecting lab testing, consumer-facing physician-guided testing. We're working with a large visiting nurses association, helping them to optimize their workflow and improve their scheduling, given the uh, criticality of uh, visiting nurses and phlebotomists at the point. And working with uh, researchers at the, at the leading academic medical center on inpatient assessment, uh, a timely inpatient assessment risk. We also have a project where one of our clients is looking to make sure that employees and visitors, in fact, of the uh, organization are using their personal protective equipment and they're using it correctly. Let's talk about controlled access for visitors, patients to facilities. CDC, in the beginning of outbreak, issued a set of guidelines that include the following line items, that only essential visits are allowed. For example, parents of pediatric patients, visitors must be screened prior to entering the facility. Visitors must be received training and training materials at the entrance of the facility. Personal protective equipment must be provided and worn at all times. Number of visitors has to be controlled and especially access to patients who are at high risk also has to be limited and controlled. Visitors' movement around the facility has to be limited and tracked, and this is not a CDC guideline, but institutions obviously are interested in collecting statistics about visitors coming to the facility. So what we did is we implemented a visit tracking application. So if you look at the, some of these requirements, they are highlighted the need is obvious and very uh, well defined but to facilitate the uh, facilitate the uh, tracking and control of visitors is not easy for example a patient may be considered high risk was not considered high risk when admitted but the patient may have contracted the disease during the stay so the need to protect the patient very quickly and prevent visitors is very important or a uh, facility might have multiple entrances and uh, controlling visitors to the same patient is a challenge because it is difficult to coordinate control of visits across multiple entrances. So there are a number of other challenges associated with a relatively simple requirement. For example, the guidelines change quickly and the number of visitors to, to a patient may be limited. How do you control that quickly? How do you prevent, how do you facilitate changes to the process? We worked with leading academic medical center in the United States and implemented a visitor tracking application. It is predominantly designed for attendants in the door facilities. They search for patients that uh, the visitor is supposed to visit and uh, they identify, identify whether this patient can be visited, how many visitors already came to the patient. They ask the visitor a number of screening questions defined by CDC. They check for high fever, and then they increase the visitor count when the visitor passes through the facility so that additional visitors can be counted as well. So once the application determines that the person is cleared to visit, they issue a warning or note to the attendant, depending whether a visit allowed or not. In order for the application to work successfully, it had to be integrated with uh, authentication authorization system and uh, with the electronic healthcare records of the organization. So the application is implemented in two languages. So the second application, which is even having longer and more profound implications, is called past work. One of the critical aspects of the process is that, of the pandemic, is that health workers are exposed to infection and they have to be screened very carefully to prevent distribution or, or spreading of infection and essentially maintaining their own health. 
so we implemented uh, with the academic medical center uh, also major academic medical center in the united states we implemented the application that screens basically operates in the mode similar to pre-flight check-in and provides something that is called pass to work similar to the uh, flight check-in you the individuals uh, healthcare workers can either do it in their own convenience in on their own personal device they log in they screen themselves at any time they need to do that typically once a day before they go to work and then the application generates a either a pass to work or stay at home instruction in both cases the pass to work or prevention to work is emailed to the individual and they can show if they clear to to work they can show the pass to work to the facility within within the facility they also the organization is implementing some additional capabilities they add barcode tracking so that uh, you can easily uh, identify who received the pass who, who didn't they integrate with the thermometer directly so that the temperature can be captured directly into the application and they're doing some additional analytics so the application is being used actively across multiple facilities of the institution one interesting implication of this application is that it is not confined to a single organization it is actually has a very significant life after the pandemic slows down the pass to work is essentially a very needed function that should be available not just for healthcare institutions but for for example restaurants retail chain hospitality organizations so pretty much anywhere where people are going to be returning back to work one interesting aspect of this application is that it uh, provide something that in the past was difficult to facilitate the uh, employees the health workers in this particular case have an application in their hands provided by organization that they have to use. What does that mean? It means that the organization can use it for different purposes as well. For example, they can communicate some additional training materials through this application. They can notify a health worker if they have to move to another facility so they can facilitate through this application resource management. So there, there are substantial positive implications of this system for the organizations and not just in healthcare. These are a few screens from the application. You can see that the uh, user either searched by employee ID or their personal information. They have to enter email, email may be captured from the HR system or from the HR system. They indicate which site they are supposed to work for. They answer a few questions. If everything is good, they're cleared to work. If they indicate symptoms or the fever, they are not cleared to work. The uh, uh, application suggests some help, where to, to search for help. At the end of the uh, process, the uh, application essentially sends an email pass for the user to be cleared to get to work that the user can show the entrance. Moving on to the next application, um, something that we've been working with a healthcare organization that has multiple facilities is Research Management uh, Control Center. What is interesting about this application is that uh, in the past, organizations did have a need to move patients from one facility to another. So, for example, if EMT picks up a patient that is closer to one facility, they will move that person to that facility. There may be other reasons that the uh, physician or specialist is not available at the, at the nearest facility. So there is a need to move patients around based on the on certain capabilities of the facility. But there hasn't been a large scale a need to monitor resources, bed availability, availability of skilled personnel and availability of equipment in real time or near real time across multiple organizations, much like it happens now. So the organization requested to build a control center where the resources are being managed across multiple organizations, multiple uh, hospitals, multiple facilities. So the application tracks availability of uh, personal equipment, of ventilators. They track, obviously, bed availability across organizations. And uh, the application loads the data from multiple sources on an hourly basis and display information to the uh, at the control center in the form of interactive dashboards and tabular reports it also generates reports when resources are critically low
The data collected is being used or collected for the future and ongoing analytics to, in fact, help the facility to manage their resources at the point of care and for future purposes beyond the pandemic. The next uh, application I wanted to talk about is something that we're working with an innovative startup related to widely available screening for COVID-19. The issue with COVID-19 testing is that there are lots of different types of tests, but uh, there are very few that are reliable or provide high level of quality of the results and approved by FDA or cleared by FDA. Um, and in the United States, this has been a major issue at this point. One of the issues is that uh, delivery of tests to patients or to, to users on a wide weight scale also requires that tests are easy, easily, uh, easily uh, the samples are easily collected. So at this point in time, there are a few labs that provide reliable uh, I don't want to say FDA approved because uh, uh, things keep changing. <laughs> FDA approves and disapproves things only on a, on a daily basis. But there are a few labs that provide relatively fast, relatively reliable, and easy to uh, collect sample for, for easy sample collection tests. We're working with a set of labs, and we have been facilitating online shopping experience driven by clinicians who guides initially do the screening for the patients and then guide the patient to the appropriate test. The patient can order test from the online source. The actual the test is either broken up into two groups. One is antibody test and another is PCR test, direct test for the virus. And the actual type of test, the actual test is guided, type of test is guided by physician, but uh, during the ordering process, the application actually determines which lab can provide the appropriate test because labs have limited availability, they have limited, some tests need require a mobile phlebotomists to collect samples. So there is a fair amount of complexity in deciding which lab will provide the test and the application is capable of selecting the right lab for the right patient. So that's that. I, I basically described the application. It has to integrate with multiple labs, as I said, and the labs continue to provide different types of tests and increase the number of uh, available tests to the consumers. Another interesting application we've been working with in the context of COVID-19 is screening patients, determining whether patients are at risk or at high risk for COVID-19 and determine it for inpatient setting when patient is in the hospital and their condition changes quickly. So this comes from our prior work with the organization on quality and safety dashboards. In the application that I'm talking about, the organization implemented a wide range of metrics representing different clinical conditions for the patients. And they now added a COVID-19 metric, which tracks whether the patient is at risk and also whether that being at risk or being infected affects other metrics. I'm going to show you a quick couple of screenshots from this application. In this particular case, you can see a number of test patients, different metrics. The red state means the action requirement required. Yellow state is that patient is at risk, but action is not required, might be suggested. And then green state means that there is no action required. So here's an example of the patient who has suspected COVID-19. There are a number of criteria that defines that. Obviously, he's awaiting up for the PCR test. And this is what happened with the patient in the HR system, what was ordered, what his demographics information, comorbidities that he has, and what devices he's being used. That's what defined by the clinicians. They also have an ability to defer the uh, notification by currently by one day, but uh, we're working to be to, to offer clinicians ability to defer by custom, custom interval. If everything is good in this particular case, there's nothing, nothing to be done. Let's move to another application that we've been working with and also came from our prior experience in, in building clinical systems and also logistics application. We've been, we, we worked with the, in the past with a visit, large visiting nurses organization that wanted to optimize their workflow. But this work came very handy in the current instance when the load on visiting nurses and mobile flow bottomists is very high and the need for them across different geographical areas keep changing. The idea was one of the questions the organization is asking is 
uh, or the major question the organization is asking is why one nurse can visit multiple patients, sometimes 10 patients a day, another nurse can visit a smaller number of patients or on a different day at a different time of the day. So they're trying to understand what affects the uh, affects nursing workflow and how they the workflow can be improved and optimized. For the purpose of doing that, uh, we installed tracking software on the mobile devices that nurses are carrying around, and we essentially monitor their movement around visits, and we can understand uh, what affects success of the visit, how often, how much time the nurse spends with the patients, how much time she spends or he spends in the in traffic, and so on. So we analyze routes, we analyze traffic patterns, time of the day, condition of the patient, and the goal is to identify which factors actually affect the uh, affect nursing workflow and identify those that are uh, important and those that uh, we can discard. The information is stored for attestation for legal reasons. The organization is reporting to insurance companies and making sure that nursing visits correspond to correspond to what is being billed to the insurance company and now they have the way to objectively attest to, to, to these visits. So one of the requirements is not just to identify factors that affect the workflow, but also help organization and specifically practice management to improve scheduling. We're also in discussion and uh, working on automated scheduling and predictive analytics for, for example, how the what's the need for nurses and for buttons may be at a given point in time, for example, during flu epidemics that will be obviously happening sometime in, in winter. There, is, there were very substantial uh, technical and organizational and R challenges in uh, building this application. Some of them are technical. The tracking software drains the batteries of mobile devices if it is running all the time. The quality of tracking changes uh, depending on whether the person is in a building, visiting multiple patients in a building, or the person drives at high speed. So those challenges, we're, we've been dealing with those challenges. There are obviously other types of challenges. Just for example, the nurse is terribly happy with the fact that there is a tracking software installed on their mobile devices, and we had to work with the organization to convince the staff that that's not a big brother idea, but actually something that would help nurses to improve their work. This is another application that we've been working with a retail chain that is interested to make sure that uh, personal protective equipment for COVID-19 is being used by the employees and also monitoring of uh, use of equipment by visitors to the uh, by visitors to the organization uh, to the to the stores. The application is using video surveillance system that are already installed in the organization and the stories. And uh, it is using machine learning to train the system to recognize correct use of personal protective equipment. Video footage is being analyzed in real time or near real time. And if the equipment is not correctly used or the system identified that it is not correctly used, security personnel is being alerted and can see the footage that indicates where the equipment was not correctly used. This is our, that was all I wanted to talk about during the webinar.